pastor Jamal Bryant says he's thinking about launching a cannabis business at his church. New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. I'm looking for people that smell like weed. I want eight of you, if you'll come meet me, stay right here for me, thank you. Hold it right there, amen. I need eight of you, would you come very quickly? You've been praying about it, you've been, in fact, talking to God, thank you. Above reproach, a phrase used to describe someone who has an impeccable character and whose behavior is so upright and morally sound that no one can legitimately accuse them of wrongdoing. This is not only a characteristic that should be apparent in all who draw breath, but it is a requirement for those that oversee a congregation. Sadly, to be above reproach these days is a seemingly rare thing. Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, born on May 21, 1971, in Boston, Massachusetts, Jamal Bryant boasts an impressive academic resume that includes Morehouse College and Duke University. In 2002, Jamal Bryant founded the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland, where he served for 18 years. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Every sister just elbow another sister say he should have listened. Every brother, would you tap another brother and say, I should have listened to her. God help me, old saints, y'all forgive me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You gotta find somebody. Before moving on to become the senior pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church of Stonecrest, Georgia in 2018. New Birth had once boasted an attendance of 25,000 members under Pastor Eddie Long. This is only, this is done in the kings of Israel. They surround him, raise it in the air. He had now, wrap, wrap him in this girl room, real slow, real slow, real slow. He's wrapped in the word of God. He's sealed by the blood of Messiah. They'll raise him up right now. He now is raised up from a commoner to a kingship. Come on, raise it up. And I'll walk him around. That number had recently dropped closer to 10,000 due to the church's late pastor being involved in a series of sex scandals that involved allegations from multiple young men that haunted him until his death in January 2017. I want you to know, as I said earlier, I am not a perfect man, but this thing, I'm going to fight. Jamal Paris says he's now haunted by a father figure, Bishop Eddie Long, pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist, one of America's most powerful megachurches. I cannot get the sound of his voice out of my head, and I cannot forget the smell of his cologne, and I cannot forget the way that he made me cry many nights when I drove in his cars on the way home. You think a man of that stature would not ever do anything like that? And that's, that's what everyone thinks. I mean, any priest, any bishop, any pastor, anyone, you're going to, the whole, whoever goes to that congregation, whoever, yes. you know, listens to that man speak is going to automatically give that man the utmost respect, you know, and that's what we we did. I mean, we, we were just regular members of the church. We wasn't anything more than kids. A case that was settled out of court, and the church came under great scrutiny for protecting such a man throughout his career. In the speech, you said that you would that you would fight to charge it. So why did you settle the case? The old gambler song got no when to hold it, no when to fold it, no when to walk away. And so I had to make a decision to save me, save my family, and save the church because continuing on was just gonna be beat, beat, beat and gives everybody more opportunity to beat up people. New Birth had made it through the gauntlet of scandal and exhibited great excitement for Jamal Bryant to initiate one of his first promises, to reduce the church's $31 million debt. However, New Birth Missionary Baptist Church was on course to continue harboring the same depraved behavior. While still at Empowerment Temple, before even taking the helm at New Birth Baptist, Jamal Bryant had endured a divorce in 2018 from Bravo TV's Real Housewives of Potomac star and mother of his children, Giselle Bryant, as he admitted to an extramarital affair. Um, it speaks of an extramarital affair yes. that wrecked your marriage. Yes. How do you explain that happening to yourself, a man of God? Yeah, I, I call it a fall into grace. You really don't need grace uh, until you're in crisis. 
Uh, and uh, it really was uh, my rites of passage. <laughs> now let's start with who Giselle is and how you ended up on the show. So you were yes. married to a pastor, uh-huh. Jamal Bryant. Mm-hmm. That a pastor cheated? The pastor cheated, yes. Additional compounded stories of infidelity became par for the course concerning Jamal Bryant as he faced accusations days before taking the helm at new birth from Tamnola Oliver who was apparently carrying his child, as well as fathering a child out of wedlock with 34-year-old Latoya Shanti Odom and an eight-year-long affair with Tanya Griffin. After over a decade post-divorce and against the wishes of the children, Giselle and Jamal attempted to rekindle their relationship together. Like you guys broke up. Yeah. You're working on getting back together. Some people don't feel like it's a good idea. Even your own <laughs> daughters might not necessarily think it's a good idea. Yeah. So yes, we we were working on us getting back together and being back together. And but you know, he lives in Atlanta. I live in Maryland. With the pandemic, we realize it's just not the right time. It's just not gonna work. And if you are curious to know if they're still going strong, you can really rearrange these letters to find out. Jamal's personal relationships are undeniably messy and fall far short of being above reproach. Yet they are not the primary focus of calling this man into question. At this point, the unbiblical and disqualifying conduct of Pastor Jamal Bryant is practically countless. Instead of obeying the pastoral instruction as given by Paul to Timothy, in one of Brian's more famous yet moronic sermons during the consecration of Marvin Sapp at the Chosen Vessel Cathedral, Jamal spends more time on Italian designer Armani and his wealth. In 2001, he was named the most successful designer in Italian history. As a friend, his personal net worth is $9.3 billion. Self-oriented, what about me theatrics? I just want to know, when is it going to be my season? When, when is it going to be my turn? Where is God going to open my door? I want to know, where, where? So this is supposed to sound better because he's preaching like this. You can say the most heretical thing if you deliver it with passion. And then this. Jesus at 30 accepted his ministry. He had been in carpentry since he was 13. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you, 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order. 85% of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. 85% of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. 85% percent of his life he is doing what his natural father wanted but it did not line up with his divine dna 85 percent of his life he's anointed he's called he's chosen and he's wrong for 85 percent of jesus's life pastor jamal bryant said that jesus was wrong if, if Jesus was disobedient to God the Father for 85% of his life and was instead solely obedient to his earthly father, all, all of us who believe in the blood of Jesus to be the perfect atonement for our sins, all of us are going to hell. They laughing in the church. They laughing. What is so funny? At the risk of being heretical, you ain't risking it. it that's full on heretical. <sighs> Jamal Bryan is the heresy that keeps on giving, though. This guy is not a Christian. The man literally said Jesus, who is God, for 85% of his life was out of order. Well, Jamal Bryant acknowledged that there was a risk he was going to be heretical, and I guess if that was his goal, he succeeded. Jamal Bryant succinctly illustrates his lack of understanding the biblical Christ. The fact that Marvin Sapp just sits there exemplifies his cowardice. Sadly, this kind of action isn't unsurprising for Jamal Bryant. Category error, a circumstance where concepts from one category are incorrectly applied to another, creating a flawed and false narrative. The theological concept of free will and the choice of accepting Jesus is unrelated to the issue of choosing an abortion, and conflating the two results in an invalid argument. Sean, after the Supreme Court uh, ruling about uh, that new birth and me are pro-choice because Jesus is. You keep using the word 
I don't think it means what you think it means. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you decide to let me in, that's pro-choice. Huh. God in the Garden of Eden said to Adam and Eve, all of these trees are available to you. I want you to pick those. I'm not putting this other tree behind barbed wire and the ADT alarm. Don't eat it, but that's your choice. Yes. Christianity in and to itself is pro-choice. This is absolute blasphemy. Pro-choice means advocating legalized abortion. Is he trying to tell us that God is, is an advocate for legalized abortion? He quoted the scripture which says, Jesus in Revelation 3 and 20, which said, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. What does that mean? All right, does that equate to abortion? Is that what Jesus is saying? No, that's not That's not at all what Jesus is saying. Jesus is pro-choice, huh? What Pastor Brian said really revealed a lie about himself and the state of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. What he quoted or paraphrased was Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. This verse is about repentance. One Jamal Bryant, the senior pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Baptist Church. What is really problematic with what Bryant has said, he's dared to step into the platform and, and take hold of a sacred desk and pontificate about subject matter that is in complete opposition to a biblical worldview. Unfortunately for him, he is absolutely standing on the wrong side of that battle. And hey, why not talk about a baby issue at a baby dedication? But we also believe that mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them. For As we're living in a world that, that is declaring war on women, we declare that God is going to make you fit for the battle. I'm done. I'm done. I'm upset. But at least Jamal Bryant is brave enough to stand for his beliefs and keep the video public. Oh, that's that's embarrassing. Shocking. Okay, just just everybody calm down. Maybe we just all need something soothing. Some some herbal tea, perhaps. Or some breathing exercises. Something soothing, you know. Pastor Jamal Bryant says he's thinking about launching a cannabis business at his church. The good pastor said he's looking for more members who don't mind uh, keeping a harvest of marijuana in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. okay. Listen to this. I'm looking for people that smell like weed. I'm at their place, Rashawn. His... <laughs> no, 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 really. It is... <laughs> <laughs> New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males. They're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they growing weed at the church, where do I join? Yes. Jamal Bryant just said that his church growth strategy is to grow marijuana to attract local young men. Jamal Bryant is so much of a friend to the world that he would even advocate things that the world wants, such as growing marijuana on the property of his church. How Jamal Bryant is my cousin. Yes, I'm embarrassed of such. <laughs> and is encouraging his false church to sell weed. I believe what we're witnessing is what happens to a man when God turns that man over to himself. Wouldn't it be more important talking about growing things you can actually use? Like, I don't know, vegetables, talking about raising livestock, farm animals, stuff like that. But weed, that sounds like a money grab to me. And are you going to be able to sell weed, Mr. 501c3, tax exempt church? Are you going to be able to do that? What are we even talking about? Why would you say a thing like that as a pastor? Seriously, you want to grow giggle grass, chill dill, the stoner sage, the funky skunk. I just, I can't, I can't with this guy. How about you grow food and give that away? for free the worst thing that god can do to you or me is to turn us over to ourselves for that means the holy spirit will no longer tug at your heart the holy spirit will no longer bring any conviction you won't see what's wrong with what you're saying we are called to be sober-minded not baked 
Seed Faith Theology is a belief promoted by prosperity gospel preachers that teach if you plant a seed, usually in the form of money or other donations, God will multiply it back to you with financial blessings, health, or other rewards. This is a different gospel whereby the preachers compel you to give frequently with ambiguous dollar amounts and none of it is biblical. Jamal Bryant is a very big fan. Everyone to aspire towards a seed of $41 on tonight. I want to challenge all of you uh, beyond your tithes, beyond uh, your general offering. I want to challenge every person uh, to give a seed today, a 365. I want you right now, 2,000 of you, I need you giving a seed of 220. 20 of you who are in this room. I want you to secure a seed in your hand of $200 on behalf of your son, on behalf of your brother, on behalf of your father. Watch this, 20 of you. And I'm believing that the cloud of glory is going to descend in the next 20 minutes. In that very same sermon, in fact, I guess the glory cloud did descend because despite Paul stating that all things should be done in a decent and orderly fashion, female pastor Glenn decided to hold NFL tryouts tonight. We glorify you. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Yes, Lord. The bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. And what's a holy and sovereign God-revering church service without a little crotch anointing? Something wrong with Atlanta. Every, every, just, Lord have mercy. The Word of Faith theology is a subset of Christianity that believes we have authority as God does, and we are capable of speaking things into existence, such as blessings, favor, and even our healing, when in reality, only God has such power. Word of Faith theology obliterates the call to pray to God and elevates self with unbiblical declarations and decrees. This is idolatry, and the Word of Faith is a well-known heretical belief, and it shipwrecks the faith of those who remain unhealed as they very often do. Sometimes prosperity pastors, like Bryant, will even compel followers for a financial seed for their healing. Sow a seed, minimal of 88. Sow a seed of 800 on today. Repeat after me, Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is in expectation for the victories that are coming, for the healing that is coming for the miracles that are coming, for the deliverance that is coming. I don't know whether y'all believe it, but God said your surgery is about to be canceled. Come on, I speak healing over your body. I speak healing over our community. I speak healing over our families. I speak healing over every cell in your body. I declare your bloodstream is clean even by the grace of God your respiratory system, your reproductive organs, your skeletal system. Hey Jamal, how are those glasses working out for you? 
But despite raising questions within the community, Jamal Bryant soon found love again with a woman he appointed as his co-pastor. He has appointed Dr. Carrie Turner as the co-pastor of New Birth Baptist Church to recognize her ministry credentials. If you take a peek at her Instagram page, good luck convincing yourself it's anything but a Christian page, let alone a pastor's or a mega church co-pastor's page. It's all about fashion and she flaunts herself because she wants you to notice that she is beautiful, craving your attention and admiration. I mean, how does posting all these pictures of yourself in fancy designer clothes and going on these extravagant trips really align with the teachings of Jesus Christ? So grateful, I am so grateful to God uh, that she has consented to be my wife. Would you help me thank God for uh, Dr. Carrie Turner, come on. So I can, I can confidently say that character and integrity are the primary things right now for me. I cannot deal with a person who does not have those things. Have you met your fiance? God help me, old saints, y'all forgive me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You gotta find somebody. 85% of his life, he's anointed, he's called, He's chosen and he's wrong. Stuck up saints and judgmental, hypocritical believers never want to digest is that every stripper that I find in scripture is a brother. Well, I got a problem with, with black people that go to white churches. That nobody has ever paused to ask the probing interrogative. How, how did the trees feel on Palm Sunday? The Word entreats pastors to preach the Word of God, not theatrics and lunacy. Jamal is to rightly handle the Word of God and is seemingly incapable of doing so. What can I say about Jamal Bryant that hasn't been said a hundred times over? Jamal Bryant is one of the more recent ones where I think is a manipulator. He is a liar. He is uh, another serial adulterer. It's very entirely clear that the man is a heretic, that the man is a liar. In every sense of the word, Jamal Bryant is an ungodly man. They're there for social causes, but not for the Savior. We war in love. We fight for the flock. I humbly ask you to pray. Pray for this church and for the victims of a theology that spits in the face of a sovereign and holy king. In a year of presidential election 2024, we see the following from Democratic nominee Kamala Harris in late October. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. Luke Pulaski and Grant Beth join us now. Essentially, she was speaking, and we decided to say, Christ is King, Jesus is Lord. Um, and we got a lot of backlash. Um, as you can see in that firsthand video, um, I was pushed uh, by an elderly woman. Um, we were heckled at, we were cursed at, um, we were mocked. Um, in reflection of the event, uh, Jesus was mocked, uh, you know, <laughs> his disciples were mocked, um, and that's okay. In reality, we did God's work, and we were there for the right reasons, um, and God was watching. Those two young men then talked to Fox News, sharing their experience of then being ushered out of the rally. They weren't even allowed 
to stay for simply stating Jesus is Lord. No matter where one lies politically, when an event like this occurs, the candidate has to engage in damage control. Now, you don't have to be a Christian, you don't have to be a Catholic, but where's the tolerance? Where's the inclusion, Kamala and co? And let's not forget, within hours of this, Kamala was rocking up at a church trying to play the Christian card. Kamala Harris's mask is falling off. Yes, the presidential nominee has been caught out yet again, this time desperately trying to win over Christian voters by any means necessary. You, uh, you want to take a guess at which church she showed up at? Kamala Harris attended a new birth missionary Baptist church service in Georgia on Sunday morning. Not that big a deal because it really is to be expected. That's not the issue. But when you couple some of the more recent events that have happened that really even involve her, the reason for me doing this is that I'm bothered. It, it, when I say bothered, Amy, I, I mean, I don't cuss. I do not cuss. I'm gonna say that again. I do not cuss. But these were times, these were moments where I wish I did because I have some words to say. And despite desperately trying to pander to the worshippers, Harris was blasted for the transparent performance. With this commentator saying, Kamala Harris messed up so bad she went to go pander at the church in what can only be described as the most cringeworthy and fake moment I have ever seen. This is fake on steroids. Of course, not everyone in the church was happy about it, as one lady who protested was escorted out of New Baptist Missionary Church. absolutely no Esther from the Bible, and there is no such thing as praying for a hedge of protection. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray a hedge fence of protection around your daughter. No hurt, harm, or danger. I pray that you'll assign a hundred thousand angels to cover her head. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have given her this moment to defy the odds in front of the entire world. Now, God, not for her name, but we promise we gonna give you all of the victory. Not by might, not by power, but only by your spirit. And those of you who believe that Kamala Harris was born for this moment, would you give God glory for her even in this? Jamal Bryant has an education in political science, and so it is no surprise that he is involved in the political arena. Georgia, over one million people have uh, voted early. Voting early is still uh, uh, available until uh, November 1st. Would you spread a rumor? Would you just tell the people on your road, you need to vote this week? You need to vote this week. Amen. 
you need to vote this week. Bless the Lord. I'm telling you, I, I, I hadn't seen it on this wise. I hadn't seen it uh, on this wise. They were so mad. I mean, they was big mad uh, last week that they, we had the vice president. I mean, I'm, they, they couldn't even contain themselves. Uh, they, they were so mad. However, it is laughable that someone who is intolerant Christ attempts to perform damage control at a church where the adulterous pastor states that Christ was wrong 85% of his life amongst innumerable disqualifying acts. A the devil is doing too much. He's doing too much. And he has used this election cycle to raise up demons who think that they are going to push us backwards in time. I don't know who the enemy thought he was playing with, but I need the enemy to serve notice that you are dealing with a free black man. I am not going to be intimidated or pushed around because you done raised up some white patriarchal preachers who think that they can throw off a black preacher who knows who he is and knows what he is called to do. You can try that with some other ones, but this one right here, you done picked the wrong one today. Just because you got a few black people that go to your church, that don't mean you ain't racist. Just because you done kissed a few black babies, don't mean that you ain't a white supremacist. As long as you shouting about pro-life, keep that same energy with the death penalty. Above reproach, a phrase used to describe someone who has an impeccable character and whose behavior is so upright and morally sound that no one can legitimately accuse them of wrongdoing. The word is clear in that we are called to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. We cannot stand idly by and let charlatans who mock the sovereignty of Christ lease the flock. Beloved friends, pray and test. But Jamal Bryant is no man of God and he is certainly not above reproach. Mad love, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.